All right, so again, you want to start with the longest possible chain, and that's going to give you the stem of your word, of your name. Then you look for the functional group. Make sure the functional group has the smallest number possible. Then you can look for chains, um, side chains, or substituent groups. So chains or functional groups in addition to the one that we claim in rule two. Now NH2 um, is a suffix if it's the only functional group, otherwise it's a prefix. So if you have um, an amine, or I'm sorry, an amide, no, an amine, if you have an amine, then it's considered the functional group only if there's not another functional group. The position of the side chain and functional group is given by the number followed by the dash. Remember the functional group that we name in rule two should be the lowest um, on the lowest carbon. If there's not a functional group, if it's just an alkane, um, an alkane then you would want to um, have the side chain on the smallest. So we're going to look at some example, or before the example, sorry. Um, the side chains or groups, these are the most common three that you're going to see, where you have a chain of carbons coming off of your main chain. Um, and so you would say methyl, ethyl, propyl. You're um, taking the number of carbons and just adding a YL. Halogens can also be a side group. Um, and so you would use, put an O at the end. Instead of an IDE, it's an O. So fluoro, chloro, bromo, ido. And then you have your amine. Remember, the amine is going to be considered a side group if there's another functional group in the compound. Now we're going to look at some examples. All right, so if we start up here at the top, the first thing that you need to do is find your longest chain. So we could number the um, carbons like that. We could number them um, like this. So there's no longer chain. Like it doesn't matter if we're starting and going straight across or if we're going from top and over. If we were to name or number um, the atoms, the carbons, and go down one, two, and then to the right three, we would have a shorter chain. So that's definitely not what we want to use. We want to use the longest chain that we can make. So four is the longest chain, meaning we're starting at the top and then taking a left, or we're going straight across. And it doesn't matter which way you do it, you're going to end up with the same answer here. Um, so let's start at the top and then turn. So we're following these blue numbers. That means this group right here is my side group, and that side group is made of one carbon. So that is a methyl group, and it is attached to my second carbon as the lowest carbon. So if we started the numbering on this side, that would have been one, two, three on the third carbon, but that's not the lowest number. So we would name this two, dash, methyl, and then four is but, and they're all single bonds, so butane. So two methyl butane. Now let's think about this. Do we really need the two? Yes, because if we don't have the two, then we don't know if the side group is here on the second carbon, or it could be on the um, third carbon, if we count in this direction. So that number becomes important because it tells you which carbon it is on. Sometimes you're going to find that the number is pointless. Um, for example, if it was three carbon chain and then you had a carbon coming off of the middle one. To say that it was two methyl um, ethane, nope, propane, 2-methylpropane um, would be kind of pointless because you wouldn't have a methyl group if it was on the end of the carbon. 
All right, for this group over here, we can number our carbons one, two, three, or we can number our carbons one, two, three. Notice that it doesn't really matter because the bromine is on the second carbon regardless, and three is the most that we'll be able to make. Now we do need to specify that it is on the second carbon because we could have it on the first carbon. So we're gonna have to say two bromo propane. Okay, one bromo propane would put the bromine over here and then that would have been an H. So it's important that you specify that it was on the second carbon. All right, looking at this one, we have an um, amine, but we also have this functional group. So this is gonna be a side group because we have a, a more dominant um, functional group. And this setup is a carboxylic acid um, class of compound or carboxyl um, functional group. The longest number of carbons is two that functional group would need to be on the lowest carbon, which is why we started um, that carbon as one. So to name this, we don't need to specify that the nitrogen is on the second carbon because it can't go on the first carbon because of the carboxyl group. Um, so we can just say amino. So notice it's not amine anymore. It's amino when it's a side group, it's an O instead of an E. And then two carbons is F and then anoic, if I can spell it, there we go, anoic acid. So amino ethanoic acid. Um, it has a common name, which IB doesn't use, but you might recognize if you're in bio. So um, in chemistry, they want us to use the appropriate IU pack name. All right, for the last one, going the reverse direction where we're gonna draw this structure instead of naming it, what you wanna do is figure out that chain of carbons first. So I jump straight to um, my chain of carbons, which is prop, and prop means three. So we need a chain of three carbons. One, two, three. Then I look at my suffix. I notice that A and E, so they're all single bonds. I don't have a special functional group. If I had um, a double bond or a triple bond or a functional group, I would wanna draw that in next. I don't, so I'm good. Then I go to my side groups. Um, the first carbon needs to have a chlorine on it. It doesn't matter if I call the first carbon there or this the first carbon, it's gonna be the same thing. Um, I like to start from the left and work my way right. Um, when I have that option. So we're gonna put chlorine off of the first carbon. And then on the second carbon, we have a methyl group coming off. So this is the first carbon. Second carbon has a carbon group coming off of that. If you wanted to, you could go back in and you could fill in hydrogens um, so that each carbon has four bonds to it. Okay, so you could draw the structure like that. You could just leave it like that because it's understood that everything else would be hydrogen so that the carbons had four bonds. Or you could draw one, two, three carbons, and then you could have a chlorine coming off that first carbon, and then you could have a methyl group coming off of that second carbon. So that's one, two, three carbons for my long chain. I have my side groups um, coming off. All right, try the ones that are listed in your textbook and let me know if you have any questions.